You can't just force us into a trial by combat. She has thrown your gauntlet. No! <laughs> she has reached over into my china cabinet and thrown my gauntlet into the ring. I was saving that. Hey everybody, welcome to Fess Up, where the Fess sisters help spice up your conversations with unique and thought-provoking questions. That's right, we're breaking the ice with a sledgehammer! I am, I am the oldest Fess, my name is Amy Fess. My name is Marissa Fess. And my name is Ina Fess. And for the first time ever, we are in the same room recording. This is weird shit, yo. Let's hope it turns out okay. So this like really embarrassing story happened to me at work. I have a double ear infection. Fun. How'd you get that? The grody pool. <laughs> of course. A grody hotel pool. Yeah, we all swam in it and I'm the only one who got the ear infection. So why God? <laughs> Answer me this. So anyway, I was in work and I'm on these antibiotics that make me super nauseous. And I wear a mask at work. And all of a sudden, I feel super sick. And before I can even do anything about it, I projectile vomit so hard. So hard that my mask flies off of my face <laughs> in this like rainbow arc of purple vomit. It was purple. Purple? What did you eat? I don't know. That's the scariest part. Like, I don't know why it was purple. I think it was from blueberries. I already... Did you have any Pepto Bismol or something like that? Yeah, but that's pink, isn't it? Yeah, but it might give you a purple color to your vom. Pink plus blueberries. It was the Pepto Bismol blueberry combo. Aha! And stomach acid. Yeah, but there was nothing quite like looking on the ground and seeing the aesthetic of purple vomit with a mask in it. Just in the <laughs> yeah, middle of the store. You just had to one up my nosebleed, didn't you? Yes. I can't believe you projectile vomited your mask <laughs> off of your face. It was like in the cartoons when like a diaper fills up and like swells super large. It filled up and then flew off my face. Does that happen in the cartoons? Have you never seen? I don't know. For some reason, that's like in my mind. Maybe it's from like Rugrats or something. It's maybe happened in one cartoon. Okay. It's like from a singular cartoon. I just feel like um, in like 20 years, they're going to make like a period piece sitcom. Uh, not sitcom. Well, maybe sitcom or comedy movie uh, set in 2020. And they're going to be like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if someone vomited off their mask? And then we're going to have to slam them with copyright because it happened to Marissa. I own that tragedy. It's copyrighted, trademarked. It's a real it life tragedy. <laughs> Dear Lord. How about a first question? Yeah. The first question is, what would be a good slang term for toenails? The tones. I'm going to go cut the tones? Mm -hmm. That sounds like... You're gonna go fucking scatting or something like <laughs> ba bop ba ba da bop clip. Like I'm gonna go cut a hot track of my beatboxing or some shit. Gotta go paint the tones. That sounds like you're gonna. I'm gonna go paint the town, but I gotta go paint the tones. Imagine if you painted your house, but it wasn't actually painting. You just made a mosaic made of all toenail clippings. That sounds like a serial killer thing to do. That sounds like an art piece. A serial killer art piece? <laughs> it makes a statement. Uh, yeah, the statement that you like to murder people and cut off their toenails. You don't have to kill someone to cut off their toenails. I could have 50 live people in my basement tied up and I just farm <laughs> them for toenails. No death is involved. I bet there's like some foot fetish people who've made, <laughs> who've made um, toenail art before. Is that called tart? Yes. <laughs> or is it tone art? Tone art. It is if that's what we call the toenail. Do we have any other ideas? I feel like the tones, it's a good option. It's it's a strong option. What if we call them the Frosted Flakes? Go Ew! <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know, when you kind of have a slang be something else, like uh, the, the, what is it called? The, the mustache poop thing on, uh... <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Oh, what is that called? 
Is like a dirty Sanchez? Yes, yeah, that. The dirty Sanchez. Can we take a minute? I've never heard of a poop mustache or a dirty Sanchez. Here we go. At all. Dirty Sanchez. It's when a man has fucked you in the ass oh. and you've shat it on the dick and then you've given a blowjob and the poop makes a mustache. I don't think anyone's ever done it in the history of the world, yeah. but... I'm going to say there's a completely fictional scenario. But Urban Dictionary has popularized it. Ina looks like she's going to vomit right now. She's going to projectile vomit her mask off. Right onto the microphone. <laughs> what color will it be? Purple. Have you been taking my Pepto Bismol? No, actually, I uh, the last thing I ate was a burger, so it'll probably be just classic brown. Ew, chunky. At least I had the I, the decency to make it a beautiful color. <laughs> Fair. Okay, but the Frosted Flakes is kind of funny to me. It's just like I'm gonna go paint my Frosted Flakes. I just don't know where you got that from. Like. I just gotta pick a red <laughs> no, to represent toenails. They're kind of shaped like frosted flakes. Please tell me your toenails are not <laughs> like frosted flakes. Well, to be fair, dads are kind of like frosted flakes. Roasted? I mean, he's dropped a lot of things on them, rolled a lot of things over them. They're not like perfect, like half circles or whatever. Like, what's it called? An arch? They're not perfectly arched. He has like ridges in his. Yeah, they're not rounded. They're just kind of, I don't even want to say like sandpapery, but they've got texture that they're not supposed to have. <laughs> and they kind of a color to them that's frosted flake-esque. Exactly. So are you saying that gross fungusy nails would be slanged frosted flakes? So all boys' nails. I don't think every boy has frosted flake nails. Every boy that exists has frosted flake toenails. DM me with your arguments. <laughs> DM, I have an argument. What is it? That's wrong. What if I say it isn't? You're wrong. <laughs> Tony the Tiger says I'm right. Tony the Tiger doesn't have frosted flakes toenails. He's a boy. They're claws. So? It's different. Nope. I think you demand a trial by compound. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't feel that strongly. No, and I'm not serious Obviously. I just thought it might be fun. Would it be fun? Maybe. But. We have to wait for something we're passionate about. We can't just do trial by combat for any old argument. And you can't call it for somebody else. You can't just force us into a trial by combat. She has thrown your gauntlet. No! (laughs) (laughs) She has reached over into my china cabinet and thrown my gauntlet into the ring. I was saving that for a special occasion. And you flung it from me. Uh, so if we got nothing better than Frosted Flakes, it is um, the end. I don't know. I still like the tones. I just think the tones is so music related. Yeah, but it can be more than one thing. So many slang terms started from an actual word. I know. Frosted Flakes. Is that an actual? Like, like I don't know that that's a thing. That's like a brand. Yeah, but I think every kind of flake that is frosted like that, I call Frosted Flakes. I just feel like I gotta go paint my tones. Like, it's just somebody being lazy about... Say, they just don't want to say the ales part. How about... They don't like beer there. How about dirt shields? Hmm? They shield your toes from dirt just in that one spot. <laughs> but they do. This is interesting. But I will argue they also shield your toes from injury. So maybe it should just be the shields? Toe shields? But then this toenail toe shields, it's like the same. Yeah, that's why I'm saying just the shields. Less of a... Less of a... I think she just died. Less of a... Syllable. There we go. We've made it, folks. Wrap it up. Call it a day. I did it. But then wouldn't fingernails also be... Shields? Yes. All nails are shields. Okay. All nails are shields unless their texture is all crumply and then they're frosted flakes. <laughs> okay. I'll, I will accept this. How about a bit? A bit? Can I? A bit? 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 A bit. Okay, I'll stop now. Okay. See, that last time I said a bit, I, I honestly meant... You can do it a bit. Did you get it? <laughs> Thank you, I missed so it. so fun. 
I missed it. Don't do it too much. It's just you do it too much and too long, and we get like thirty minutes of you saying bit over and over again. Yeah, like when Amy was going va 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 va. Yeah, that was. <laughs> It was just my malfunctioning noise. <laughs> okay, I'm very tired. Uh, so this bit is rant. Blah 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 yeah, we've done this once before, early on in the podcast, but in case you've forgotten, one of us sisters at random is going to give an impassioned rant about something that somebody else tells him to. All right. So we have to randomize this. Let me get up a randomizer. If I am remembering correctly, our last rant was me about cheese dust. It was exactly that, yes. For the record, I never knew for sure if Amy was actually pulling up a randomizer or not, <laughs> but I can attest, seeing her in person... She is, in fact, doing it. I never doubted her for a second. Thank you. I'm no cheater. I win on skill and luck. I never doubted it because she takes so darn long to do it in real time. We cut it out of the podcast, but... (laughs) All right, here we go. Ready? Is this for ranter or subject decider? Ranter. Ranter. Here we go. Three, two, one. He's spinning. That's a very slow spin. It's got to build up momentum. (laughs) Do, 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 do. Oh, that's copyrighted. The ranter is me. <laughs> and you know what I, I don't think is copyrighted? <laughs> okay, you, this person will give me the topic. Three, two, one. But joinks. That's a spin noise. I like it. Do, do, do. It is Eno. Oh. The the hesitance to say it was the fear. I just felt like she didn't want it so bad, and then it happened for her. <laughs> you do not have the hard part here. Why are you? <laughs> yeah, so I was thinking the easiest bit. Rant about wood carvings. Okay, so why in the world is Dad so good at carving wood? <laughs> Like, I swear to God, our father, he's like a world-class wood carver. Where did he learn this knowledge? He doesn't, like, carve it. He uses, like, tools and stuff. But the people who whittle, have you ever seen somebody whittling, like, on the toilet? People who whittle soap get me going the most because they're just sitting there on the toilet. They grab the bar of soap from off of the freaking sink, and then they're like, boom, here's a duck. And you're like, uh, excuse (laughs) you? That was a time of one feces removal from your asshole? Like... (laughs) One drop, one dunk in the tank, and you got yourself a whole, like, duck soap? Like a lavender-shaped duck? Ridiculous. So here's the thing. Wood carving. It's crazy. Splinters suck. I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't do it. You think you could do it? I do not think that I could do that. It's just absolutely mind-blowing, and I couldn't believe it that Dad is so good at it. (laughs) My... I was afraid it wasn't funny. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end. Oh, this okay. just in. Amy doesn't believe in wood carving. Oh, I believe in it. She couldn't I believe just, it. <laughs> I can't believe that someone's good at it. Um, okay, that was quick, so let's do another one. I have one. a confession about wood carving. Yes. Okay. My friend sent me a bunch of paintings that her mother did. Low-key, they were terrible. (laughs) Some of them were good. Some of them were real hit and miss. But the biggest deal to me was one of them was just preposterous. Like the craziest painting I'd ever seen in my life. And then I realized... That's not a painting. That's a picture of a wood carving she did. Oh, no. And so, like, no wonder it looked weird. Because it was actually carved out of wood. It wasn't, like, painted. Oh. It was, like, a gnome carved out of, like, a piece of driftwood. For a painting, it looked bad. But for a carving, pretty good. All right. I feel like I have different standards. Well, that was quick. So I think we could do one more where Marissa does either rant or subject. I spin. Here we go. We're going to spin for this. Marissa is ranting. Okay. Encore, of course. The audience begged for it. They, they, they rigged it. 
so that I would get the rant. <laughs> All right, here we go. Who is going to be giving the subject? I hope it's Ina again. Oh, yeah, please, God. <laughs> you d- she just froze up. Why does this part scare you so bad? Oh. Oh. It's you. All zucchini. Right. Rant about zucchini go. Zucchini. Why isn't it pronounced zucchini? Wouldn't that be way more fun to say zucchini? I want to eat some zucchini. I don't want to say that anymore. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't have a lot to say about zucchinis. I don't, I don't have a lot of experience with zucchinis. Are they, are they cucumbers? No. Do they taste kind of like cucumbers? Yeah. Do they look like cucumbers? Yes, they do. How come we don't make pickles out of zucchinis? Where are the zucchini pickles? <laughs> Where are they at? We make cakes out of them sometimes. Okay, why don't we do that out of cucumbers? What's the real difference here? No one has explained it to me. He's like, oh no, the zucchini is for cooking and the and the cucumbers <laughs> for pickling and there's no trade-off here. Honestly, it's been so long since I ate a zucchini, I actually don't remember if it tastes like cucumber. I've only assuming. Does it taste that different that like... Oh, no, no, this is a baking apple. The yellow ones are only for baking. That's a thing, too. But, um, zucchinis. Let's call them zucchinis. That's all I have to say about that. (laughs) There we go. We're not, like, good at ranting anymore, are we? No, see, the thing is, these topics are not (laughs) topical. (laughs) I'm sorry. I mean, was cheese dust topical, though? Everyone has experience with cheese dust. I don't have the experience with zucchinis. (laughs) I have many experiences. I could have done that rant very well. Okay, well, I could have done a better wood carving rant. So how about that? Well, I would have loved to have swapped, but alas, we must move on to our next question. Okay. How many jobs could you lose in one day? How many jobs could you have in one day? (laughs) If you lined it up for like a whole week and had a whole bunch of job interviews... Yeah. Like, just a whole bunch, and you aced every single one of them because you are really good at interviewing. I'm pretty good at interviewing. So if you were like me, and you were really good at interviewing, and you got every single job in that, like, week time span, and they were all going to start on Thursday. But they'd all have to be within different times of each other. So, you know, they, they would schedule for at least two hours per job. I think the idea here is you're getting all these jobs knowing you're about to lose them all to set okay, so a you world stack record. Them crazy. Yeah, so here it doesn't matter when you get scheduled because fun fact, whatever jobs come at the end, you're getting fired from immediately because you're never going. <laughs> <laughs> you just get an angry voicemail. Yes. Your job is no, no job. longer here. So it all depends on how many you get, but then you could be like you're going to do a morning shift on these four jobs. The last four jobs are the night shift. And then, like, four jobs are the middle shift. You got 12 jobs there. You come in at, like, 6 a.m. for the first job. Screw up some OSHA violation really good. I have thoughts. Okay. If we're going for a record here, we should be stacking it better than 12 in one day. Okay? I think we should set up more jobs than we than we can lose. Okay, so the bonus question is, how many jobs can you get <laughs> One day. Oh, uh, well, well, these are two completely different questions. I think if you could stack up 24 jobs, one an hour, lose a job an hour, you can do that. That's feasible. And is it a record? I, You bet your ass. No one's done that Who yet. Who has the record for most jobs lost in a day? Um, Let me see if Guinness knows. Ina, you had something to say. Yes, I have something to say. I just want to say that, like, I know that we're, we're going for, like, really bad violations, but as someone who works for um, <clears throat> a minimum wage job at the moment, I can tell you, they do not fire easily. <laughs> <laughs> Especially not right now with the, you know, the whole worker shortage. But, like, probably several people I've met probably could have been let go um, a while ago. You bring up a good point. And I want to say that in this case, then... We would have to maintain several of each jobs in order to lose them all on the same day. Here's the thing. No, here's the thing. I know exactly how to lose a job in 0.3 seconds. Rip your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Rip your clothes off in front of the customers. But you get felonies for that. We don't want that. Oh, yeah. damn. You're right. Lose your job, lose your freedom, too. <laughs> you you like do that on your first job, uh, then you're in prison the rest of the day. Can so you-, you don't get to go to the other jobs. Can you steal to lose a job? Felony. But do they really call the police for every single person? Like, what if you're just stealing one moisturizer, but you happen to do it badly enough that your boss sees you doing it? And it's just one moisturizer. They're not going to 
get you a felony for that, but you're still stealing, so you might lose your job. They could call the cops if they're petty enough. E- they could, but and if it's, it's your risk, first day... It's a risk I don't know that I want to take, because we have other jobs to get to to lose. I say you just call your boss a whore. Wow, that's bold and uncalled for. That <laughs> no is burning to any bridges. Her self-esteem down with us. I'm just saying it would get you pretty fired. Well, I know what won't get you fired, and that's projectile vomiting your mask off onto the sales floor. The, so here's the thing: nobody has gotten a Guinness Book of World Record for most jobs lost in a day. So that leads me to believe we could set this at two. Well, because no one else has done it to prove that they that they've done more. Exactly. So we can set the bar very low here. We could just lose two jobs in one day. Yes, but as soon as you set this record, there's going to be 30 plus people that want to break it. So you should set it high enough that it's not going to be immediately ripped away from you. So I think 24, one an hour, let's go. You can't do that because we can't do it all in one day. Yes, we can. We can't get 24 jobs in one day. You got to drive to each job. Unless you're in a mall. Yeah, but you uh, do oh, a plaza. Mall. A mall. <laughs> a mall's even better than a plaza. I know how to lose each of them. Oh, God. You set them all up in the mall. <laughs> and then you go to your job in the competitor's uniform. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here to work at Starbucks and you're wearing your Dunkin' outfit. They're like, get out. But if you're going around and you're just in your checkers outfit when you're trying to work at Zoomies, then, like, are they really going to fire you? Or are they going to be like, oh, you've mixed up your jobs, dear. You're so lost and confused. Let me help you. No, because they know that you got hired there. Do they know this? Yes, you come in, you prove that it's you, and that you have the audacity to show up in the wrong uniform. Or will they promote you to advertisement because, oh, I'm in my Dunkin' uniform, but I walked into work at Starbucks instead because I hate Dunkin' that much. They could twist that. They could use it to their advantage. Yeah, they'd be like, rip your hat off dramatically and we'll give you a Starbucks cap and it'll be great. Do they wear caps? I don't know. I don't know. I think sometimes. Maybe. What if you just violate a bunch of OSHA problems in each (laughs) job? So you go into like, pretty much, here's the deal. You go into every job with no shirt and no shoes. That means no service, which means you can't give any service, which means they have to fire you. That's, yeah, yeah, you should. But you're not a streaker. Yeah, be partially naked. Yes. That way, you can't be arrested, but you can be kicked out of the store and fired. Women, you have to do this in New York State because that's where you could be shirtless. You can be shirtless. Yes. Hmm. Another way is, is a similar way. Just go to the big boss in the store and say, we're going on strike. You don't get fired for going on strike. They can't legally do that. No, I know, but they'll get scared. I, yeah, I guess you're right. You can right. go up to them and be like, I'm thinking that there should be a union for this yeah, show. Yeah. Mention the word union. If they go, if you go on strike and they fire you, then you have a lawsuit that you can easily file, which means most lawsuits in one day. 24 lawsuits. <laughs> If you go around, say strike, they all fire you. <laughs> 24 lawsuits. Ooh, the new Kiefer Sutherland show. <laughs> 24 lawsuits. <laughs> Can we win 24 lawsuits? Someone completely misconstrues the meaning and suddenly, like, it's a show just about 24 different, like, pantsuits <laughs> that you can wear in a courtroom. Oh, my gosh. No, but, like... Queer eye. We could set a record for the most consecutive lawsuit wins in a row. Or lawsuit losses. <laughs> or losses. That's a good point. A lawyer's got to hold that record, though. Either one is good. Win or lose. <laughs> it's still a Guinness Book record, baby. Yeah, so you need to either find the best lawyer or the worst one. You do not want someone in the middle. You don't want them to accidentally break your record. But then would it be their record because they're exactly. the lawyer who won or lost the case? So then you're still not getting a world record and no, you don't you, have a job and no one will hire you because they not bad true. press. Because we already have the record for most jobs lost and most lawsuits filed. No, I bet people file, there are probably lawyers that file hundreds of lawsuits That's for not the same. on behalf it's, of their clients. Lawyers is not, ex- not the same at all. We're talking about an individual. Okay. I'm getting heated. <laughs> I know I'm I'm waiting for the gong any second now. No, we came to an agreement. Okay. <laughs> I'm 
Just I, I for a second there, I was like, wow, it's gonna be the first trial by combat. That's not me and Marissa. But. This whole episode is on like the brink of war. <laughs> like never quite crossing the it. brink of war. Wow, if we named our episode that, it would be very dramatic, and then people would listen and be like, what? Yeah, it, it was for this. It'd be like clickbait. Clickbait. <laughs> clickbait. So guys, what? Guess what? W- what? It's. <laughs> A new yeah. bit? Shh, 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 shh. Here we go. Go to our zen place. Oh. <gasps> Guess what, guys? Breathe out. Shut your fucking face. <laughs> Guess what, guys? What? It's time for... What to are you? Ooh. What? Two... <laughs> Disney Channel TV main characters are you. This is a great question. Let me say that one more time. What two Disney Channel TV show main characters are you? That's a tongue twister. It is. As someone who, with Marissa, watched several Disney Channel TV shows during COVID. Yes. We will figure this out. I just want to clarify, before we get into this, it's going to probably be shows from, like, Early 2000s to early 2010s. Yeah, like, there's nothing recent, because we don't watch the recent shows. No, we don't watch them anymore. Except for Miraculous Ladybug. That's not but Disney Channel. Yes, it is. <gasps> it is? Why yes, is it, it on is. Netflix? No way. I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't think it's officially through Disney, but they air it on Disney Channel. Oh. Huh. Yep. We're not going to count it, though. I'm thinking mainly live action. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, we'll do like that. We can do live action. Yeah. All right. And does it, how main do the characters have to be? Like, the named characters in the title, essentially? Or like no, the, no. Like, just, like, one of the the main characters slash their best friend. They gotta be recurring kind of, yeah. in every Re- episode. They have to be one-on-ones in every episode, yeah. yeah. Okay, and no cartoons. No. Okay. Here we go. Ina is Cody from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Oh! The nerd who's like he they he super cares about everything. It has to be done right to a T because he has too much anxiety to get anything wrong. Absolutely. Like he seems like a goody goody just because he's good, but the truth is it's because he's anxious. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Ina. He has a major crush on a very cute girl that he sees all the time. Very Ina. That's a very Ina thing to happen. Adorable. Very adorable. He makes good puns, but the best pun was made on him. True. Yeah. Honey Miss Auburn, big time. No! <laughs> yeah. It was supposed to be Honey <laughs> Miss Auburn. Well, honey, you, you missed Auburn big, big time. time. Though, to be fair, if someone's going to be picky about the color that they're doing for something, it's going to be Ina. Right. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Another thing, very intelligent, like genuinely. Oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Picky, but also, like, they have the smarts to back it up. Yes. Interested in very niche things. Cody was always, like, coming out with, like, a, I learned about this very specific type of rock in biology class, and that's going to be relevant for this whole episode. But it's just, like, or, like, the time he learned about black mold or whatever, and then all of a Uh sudden he was convinced that the hotel had black mold in it. Like, Ina hyperfixates on very weird things and uh, is smart about them, so. Yeah. I can relate to that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Marissa also does that, but it's also an Ina thing. Yeah. Okay, Ina is Cody, confirmed. Who next? Amy is Alex Russo. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Very selfish, but sometimes has heart of gold. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Character development, for sure. Okay, yeah, like, I need a side rant for just a hot second before we move on with this. Alex Russo is made out to be just absolutely the worst person ever, right? And Justin is made out to be, like, the best son ever. By the end of the show, Alex Russo has become the best child, and Justin has become a depraved asshole destined for prison. (laughs) That's all I have to say about that. Okay, (laughs) mic drop. It was very good character development, I have to agree. Yes. Fun style. Generally gets what she wants, but then doesn't realize that she actually wanted something else, probably. Very good at manipulation. Thank you. <laughs> also, she she 
is generally positive because even if she doesn't like something that's happening, she can find a way to spin it into something fun or good for her. Mm -hmm. And also, like, very talented, very smart, but, like, doesn't value the, the smart part. And can I say, loves to laugh at people, especially her siblings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Loves to laugh at people. Yeah, like, she she has the ability to do anything she wanted, but, like, a lot of times she'd rather not, though. (laughs) Fair. Especially in school. Like, she was very smart, but she was, like, ah. Because school doesn't matter, and only smart people know that, apparently. Well, street smart people. Okay. Street smarts. Next one. What's we gotta think of one from Marissa. I'm trying to remember the Disney Wouldn't Channel show. Would she die if I said Justin Russo? It's not true. That's but not she would true. Get so mad. I would punch you in the face, <laughs> and there would be a trial by combat in which I it ended by me beating you to death. It would microphone. be an in life trial by combat. They have a 1995 one on here. God, we got old. That's so <laughs> fucking old. <laughs> I didn't notice it happening. It's so, it was so gradual, but all of a sudden, I don't remember any kid shows. I know I have to actually look them up. Okay, so I'm thinking perhaps Lily from Hannah Montana. Okay, so Marissa is a little bit of a, a tomboy, and Lily is a little bit of a tomboy. Yeah. and uh, Lily's a little jealous. Marissa can be pretty jealous sometimes. What? No, what are you talking about? No, genuinely, what? You get jealous of people. You, like, watch things on TV and you're like, I wish that were me. Yeah, who doesn't do that? Yeah, everyone does that. She's got chonk teeth. Marissa has chonk teeth. Okay, way to go for the gut. I just (laughs) had to be said, but she's... She's She's a super loyal friend. Like, we'll stick with Mm -hmm. you. Down to do weird and crazy shit, especially when she learned that Hannah Montana was her best friend and she was just like, oh, you mean you need to sneak into this party? I will dress up like your clone and then when they catch me instead, it will be so crazy and I'm so down for this. Yeah. I love how you you put on that voice like she talks like that. (laughs) She, yeah, so you're very down to clown. You're like a ride or die. Yeah. She falls in love hard, like with crushes and stuff. Like if she's got a crush... That crush is forever until it's not, and then when it's not, it's not at all. Except Orlando Bloom. I don't feel embarrassed about that one. I fangirl a lot. Lily was a super fangirl. Yeah, she was a fangirl. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't stalk people into their dressing rooms, but like, do I think about them all the time? Yes, I do, so. All right. I think think that's one. Now I gotta do the hard part number two. D. Ina is Harper. From Wizard of Waverly Place. Yes. She is the quirky, fun, upbeat friend who is going to wear the weirdest stuff just because. <laughs> like, just the... And, like, sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it slays, you know? And she's willing to take that risk. Most people are like, oh, well, I don't know if it's going to look good or not, so I'm not going to wear this. But she's like, bam! And it's either a hard win or a hard fail. You know what I mean? Like, she'll go for it. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree. <laughs> She's wearing earrings that are literal cherries right now. Uh, I just want everybody to know, I just, I just picked this up and I, it's an Ina's handwriting. Oh no. I, I held it up and Ina was like so <laughs> So I'm going to read it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> On the podcast, it says, little girl wide-eyed, um, 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 my mama put holes in all her socks. Me. Oh, Wow. <laughs> it says chuckles, though, in parentheses. <laughs> Girls, mom, thanks for telling her that. Embarrassed. I need new socks. <laughs> My day was really boring, and that was the only interesting thing that happened. That I wanted was, to remember it. She, it wasn't like a story she invented that's a real-life interaction <laughs> she had at work. <laughs> no, girl was so- you wrote it like a script. <laughs> that little girl was so cute. And I was so bored. It was the only interesting thing that happened that day. That little girl was so happy about the socks and the mom was so embarrassed. I didn't read it before. I do remember you telling the story earlier today. No, but I didn't read it before. I just saw you get embarrassed and I was like, oh, we have to read this on air live. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) Okay, back to everybody. Okay, Um, so she's also a very loyal friend even when she probably shouldn't be because Alex was questionable for a while there she's willing to tease people with you like she's a good kid but she's also that she has an edge to her she'll tease people with you she'll have a good time 
She'll be your friend even if you do bad things. You know, she'll still support you. Absolutely. Which is good for Amy, because Amy's a bad girl. She's the Alex Russo to Ina's Harper. <laughs> and also, again, with the crush thing, she has a strong crush on a character. Oh, yeah. Unrequited. But here's the thing. For Ina, it's usually not unrequited. It's just like... They, Unacted on. Yeah, n- neither of them say anything about it until it's too late. Okay, I have one for Marissa. Okay. okay. Marissa is Zach. I'm from Zach! <laughs> this is a hot take. <laughs> That's a hot take. Here's the thing. You and, and Ina are kind of uh, inseparable now because you've lived together for so long. Yeah. Alone with no other sisters around. So it's like you bouncing off of her all the time. And so she is the one who's nervous and you are kind of the bad boy in comparison <laughs> where you're kind of like, <laughs> Ina gets up to get a drink of water and you're like, hey, give me one. Yeah. And uh, she does because she's anxious. <laughs> Yeah, you're just kind of, uh, I mean, you do care more about school and are more like intelligent than he is. But you also have, like, a sort of suave street smartness um, and mischievous streak that Ina doesn't necessarily have, but Zach definitely does. And also, I would say that you... um, A confident laziness. A confident laziness, yes. And also, he can be a little quick to anger. A little aggressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's another one. Mm Mm-hmm. Likes to bug Mr. Mosby. And if you had a Mr. I, Mosby, like, person in your life. I tease people all the time. Mm-hmm. Relentlessly. Absolutely. I've had many people be like, why do you hate me? And I'm like, what? I love you. What? <laughs> She's queen of the roast. So I'm thinking. Raven. Raven. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, wow. We just rewatched that so Raven. Oh, we wow. Did. She's got vibes. All right. Kooky, off the wall. Very true. Also, will wear crazy fashion. True. She wants to look good, though. She's not wearing crazy fashion the way Ina slash Harper does. That's, like, making a bold statement. She, like, is, like, this is gonna look super good, you know? And she'll just, like, really... You know, she'll, she'll like, get ahead of the trends. Like, this isn't even a trend yet, but it's gonna look good, so she's just gonna wear it. She does like to cross-dress a lot, and so do yeah. I. She's always playing characters. She's always acting. She's always being over dramatic about everything. <laughs> I also feel like Amy has kind of, a lot of the times, very ridiculous solutions to very easy to fix problems. Fair. Yes. <laughs> That's fair. And so she goes overboard on her plan, her grand plan, and then like the whole time all she needed to do was like switch off the light switch or something like something really easy like <laughs> first i have to get in a groucho marx costume right. i'm an overthinker i'm sorry i'm just an overthinker. overthinker and then like and a meddler yes oh um, yes meddlesome okay but also like the best thanks i mean i'm cool with that i was not expecting it at all amy makes up like, out of all of us, we all have our own catchphrases and stuff that we say and, and take up from each other. But Amy makes the most. Like, some of the most iconic things are from Amy. And, like, Raven is known for her, like, oh, snap. Oh, yeah, that's true. And, and stuff like that. She always has, like, a, a ton of slogans. Or, you nasty. You nasty. Um, I have a, I do have a friend who said once to me that they should make a soundboard out of my <laughs> just weird little noises and catchphrases I make. Yeah. Because I do make the same ones over and over again. Yeah. I didn't even realize that, I, like, Ina pointed out earlier today one that I do a lot and I didn't even realize was a thing until she said it. But a lot of the time, I'll just give, like, a sassy, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, Ina does it too. But she, she does it because I do it so often. Yeah. It's very condescending. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Marissa. <laughs> Marissa knows how to make me mad, <laughs> and, and the answer is usually just me tells her something I know to be true. Her doesn't really believe it, so she just goes, "Hmm." Yeah. Well, <laughs> or or she'll just go no, and just keep saying no, and it drives me nuts. All I have to do is make a face at Ina, and she'll get upset. Like I can <laughs> tease her with a face. So, in conclusion, Amy is Alex Russo from Wizards of Waverly Place, and Raven from That's So Raven, Marissa is Lily from Hannah Montana, and Zach from Zach and Cody, Ina is Cody from Zach and Cody, and Harper from Wizards of Waverly Place. Boom. Shakalaka. All right, next question. 
Was Ursula a villain, or did Ariel simply fail to read a contract that she'd signed? Yes. Like, both. The answer (laughs) is definitely yes to both. But, like, having small print doesn't necessarily make a bad guy. No, but she literally, like, she was like, I will enslave you, ha ha ha. You know, like, that's, whether or not she was upfront about it, that's a bad guy move. I mean, if she was upfront about it and she Ariel was willing, I don't think that would be a bad guy move. No, I think it would. I think it's like, oh, uh, I bet that you can't do this or I'll murder you. You agree? I think that that still makes you a terrible person, even if they're like, sure, terrible I'll person, take that bet. but not necessarily a villain. Absolutely a villain. No. Yes. No. What do you think a villain is? No, I think Russell is a villain for different reasons. You're crazy. No. Absolutely. She's a villain for turning so many people into fucking sea urchins. Yeah, by contracts that they didn't read. It's exactly what (laughs) happened. (laughs) True. (laughs) Catch 22. Is that what that is? No. No. Not at all. Not quite, but like I can, maybe? No. No, you're right. It's not at all that. You're right, you're right. A catch 22 is like the the same, like a double standard essentially. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you think Ariel was going to read all that? She was so eager. She was like a, she was a teenager, a minor. and she, Minors can't sign contracts without their parents because that, well, things are different under the sea. But like, what was your point with that though? That Ursula's a villain for holding her to a contract when she's a minor and her parent wasn't present. That's pretty fair. That's only <laughs> if, uh, here's the deal. That's not like the most widespread information. Ursula may have been ignorant to that because she is not a ignorant sea lawyer. Let, <laughs> let <laughs> me... <laughs> you just you <laughs> Let me finish my thought, you absolute brat face. Okay. And she's not an undersea lawyer. Ignorance of the law is not freedom for the consequences of law. That's a true law. That's another law. <laughs> no one reads the laws. That's the problem. No one reads the contracts. No one reads the laws. I mean, the government is a villain. Ursula didn't know the law because she didn't read the contracts. And Ariel didn't read the contracts because fuck that shit. So they're both villains. Ariel's not a villain. What is she a villain of? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> You're a villain of stupid. <laughs> 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 no, uh, Ariel, let's, uh, can I make her a villain? She was preying on Eric. Yeah, she was Watching a stalker. Yeah. She truly was a stalker. She made a bet behind his back that she could get him to kiss her. Yeah, that's a little... <laughs> that is a little A little questionable. Yeah. She also... Yeah, she touched him while he was unconscious. I His face and foot. No, I, I know. I thought that was the joke you were going to make. No, I was going to say something else. She had public nudity. She did have public nudity. Yeah, but nobody was around and she quickly clothed herself, I think. Still public nudity. We're trying to had make there a been villain security of cameras, She would have been fine. Okay, fine. We're, <laughs> we're trying to make a villain out of someone who's great right now. Not. She's at public menace status. She's not. Villain status. Yeah, well, you don't even think Ursula's a villain, so I, I think your opinion is skewed. Hey, why do you always try to make this super serious? Let me have my comedy angle. This is comedic. No, <laughs> I think you're like, oh, well, they're not a villain because I decided. No, and then you I'm... just sit on that hill all day. No. Why is it always you two fighting? You were yelling a second ago. Fair. <laughs> Ursula just always has to be right. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, she agrees. All right, no, but Ariel, um, gingers were illegal at some point, I think. <laughs> they were seen as witches. Yeah, see? But witch. Ursula is a witch. Yeah, see? <laughs> so they're both villains. <laughs> see, witches. <laughs> no, I I just mean that she was a public enemy of, like, she would be seen as a villain by they're Eric's people villains. on Earth. Official. You know who's a villain? You can't have a name like that and not be a villain. He was named Scuttle because of the scuttlebutt, because he's he's a gossip girl. He was surely gossiping. Exo exo squawk. <laughs> <laughs> he set the whole thing in motion. I mean, had she not met him to talk about all this human stuff and be like, oh yeah, this stuff is actually fabulous, um, and taught her all of it wrong too. He spread a whole bunch of lies. <laughs> 
<laughs> he spread a whole bunch of lies that fed fantasies into a poor child princess's head for years. All she cared about was not even her own species. She was like a sea furry because of him. A sea furry? <laughs> Wait, let's go back to sea furry. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to be a human, but she's a fish. Is it a sea furry if you're half of what you want to become already? Yes. If she, you're half she's what scaly <laughs> enough to be seen as a, like a sea monster. Because it just feels weird to be like, she's a sea furry and you know it. I love that. I love that she is. But I just want to say, <laughs> if she's half human, like if I were half goat and I wanted to like, do the do with a full goat does that make me a furry? <laughs> yes! Because they have the other half that I don't have. I yes. guess so. I mean, especially though, if the genitals are different. You're permanently in costume. I wait a minute. As the furry. Genitals being different. I like that way of yeah. thinking about so, it. Like, so if air- you're an a fawn and you wanna lust after a goat, not a furry. But if you wanna lust <laughs> after a human, a furry. Yeah, because your genitals shouldn't go together. That's weird. <laughs> okay, okay, I like this. But, like, humans aren't that fuzzy. Like, should we call them skinnies? A hairy. We got hairy. hair and not fur. I'm a hairy. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> That makes you a villain. I'm a hairy Harry. Because <laughs> <laughs> no. he's a giant. He's like a oh, giant, is, isn't he? But he has his com- he has compatible genitals. Yeah. They, no, they're enormous. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Who has a bigger penis, Hagrid or the Hulk? Hagrid. Hagrid. You think? Yeah, absolutely. because the whole pa- uh, shorts didn't rip open. You're right. Yeah. We had this conversation <laughs> in private, but you're absolutely right. Okay, Hagrid or Thanos? Hagrid. But Thanos yeah. is a titan. Hagrid's just a giant. Yeah, but Hagrid next to him, like, uh, Thanos next to, like, Iron Man, not that much bigger. Yeah, he's, like, a couple like, feet taller. Hagrid's, Hagrid's like, next to double Iron your Man, height. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, But Hagrid does not carry himself like a man who's packing. It's because... He's humble. <laughs> <laughs> He's also able to practice wandless magic and no one talks about that. <laughs> he has seen the absolute carnage his dick can do and he does not want to repeat that offense. Yeah. Anyway, so Scuttle's the villain here because he turned Ariel down the path that led her to make bad contract decisions. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I mean... Her father's also a villain for having so many children he clearly was not prepared to take care of. Oh, there he's a villain for way more reasons than that, but we don't have to get into this today. We've talked about that before also. I think we have. No, I, I definitely just want like a little mermaid gossip girl video though, where it's just like XOXO. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Whatever he sings in that song. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, because he's definitely out there stirring the fucking pot. You mean the, the dingle bop? Because he's just going to make up a word for pot now. The beep boop ba ba bow. The squirrely butt. The ziddle dee doo. The gobbly gook. The sploinkus. <laughs> <laughs> the blank. The no. young diddy. The rompatu poo. Teep teep zongers. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> T.T. Bazongers. <laughs> um, well, that's all the ice breaking we can do today. <laughs> that is all. We've done it with the T.T. Bazongers. <laughs> the T.T. Bazongers um, has broken the ice. Um, if you'd like to send us a question, message us on Facebook or Instagram at Fess Up Podcast. We have a whole bunch on backlog. We got some big ideas for some of yours. So if you've been a faithful listener and you haven't heard your question yet, don't worry. We have plans. We just have to watch certain shows to make things happen, set things in motion. But it's coming, I promise. We love you. Thank you for listening and sending questions. Continue doing that. Send us an email at fessuppodcast at gmail.com. 
Let us know what's happened when you ask these questions with your friends. Tweet a question at us at fessup underscore podcast. Don't forget to use the hashtag obsessed. Send us new questions. Let us know what happened when you used our icebreakers with your friends. Share our podcast with everyone you know. Rate us like a subscribe to us. Uh, download the podcast episodes when they come out. All that jazz. And get the word out there about your three wacky friends. That's it for me. I've been Amy Fess. I've been T.T. Bazongers. Dear Lord. And I've been Ina. I'm going to go polish my frosted flakes. 